Let's hit the bad penguins. Today we do 2019 number four, neurotransmitters and signaling. I do want to remind you that neurons are no longer in the curriculum, but cell signaling is. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that can activate an action potential in postsynaptic neuron. A researcher is investigating the effect of a particular neurotoxin that causes the amount of acetylcholine released from the presynaptic neurons to increase. So here we can see that we have our neurotransmitter inside the vesicle. It goes through exocytosis, is released out into this area called the synapse, and then the neurotransmitter binds to the postsynaptic neuron, then causing some type of response. Um, so here is an action potential. So there is going to be rapid depolarization, which makes the membrane potential very positive. Um, and then we have repolarization where it becomes very negative again. This is due to sodium and potassium ions moving across the membrane. Um, yeah. So describe the immediate effect of neurotoxin on the number of action potentials in the postsynaptic neuron. So I do want to remind you that acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter and it activates the action potential. I do want to also remind you that neurotoxin is going to cause the amount of acetylcholine released to increase. So if I have more acetylcholine being released, that's going to cause there to be an increase in the number of action potentials. Predict whether the maximum membrane potential of the postsynaptic neuron will increase, decrease, or stay the same. And so the action potential is going to stay the same no matter what. So it's like an all or none response. So no matter how many times you activate it, it's only going to get to that maximum every single time. Um, so it will stay the same. Student says the number of action potentials will increase as a result of the neurotoxin as acetylcholine will be increased and thus bind to the receptors more frequently. The maximum membrane potential should remain the same, however. So part B, since the researcher proposes two models, A and B, for using acetylcholinesterase, an enzyme that degrades acetylcholine to prevent the effect of the neurotoxin. In model A, acetylcholinesterase is added to the synapse. And so if it's added to the synapse, it means it's added right here. Well, what do you notice right here? I notice that the neurotransmitter is in the synapse. And so since acetylcholinesterase degrades the acetylcholine, I would have find that this would be very effective effective um, for the process because it's going to be where the neurotransmitter is and it's going to break it down. So model A prediction is that it is effective because the acetylcholine is in the synapse versus model B has acetylcholinesterase added to the cytoplasm of the postsynaptic cell. Well, notice right here in that postsynaptic cell, there is no acetylcholine right? Because it binds to the receptor, but does not actually enter the cell. So model B is not affected because acetylcholinesterase is, in, I'm sorry, the acetylcholine is not in the cytoplasm of the postsynaptic cell. So student says model A will be effective in the preventing of the effects of neurotoxin as it will degrade the acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft where it affects the action potential cascade. Model B will be ineffective. There is no acetylcholine in the postsynaptic cell, so the um, acetylcholinesterase will not prevent the effects of neurotoxin. So I hope that this was helpful. Remember, AP5 Penguins, that's the best. Bye, y'all.